All right, guys, this is a Keychron K3 Pro, and uh, this is a heavily modified one. I will talk about the mods in a second, but uh, I love this thing. It's fantastic, and I wanted to give you an overview of it. So uh, this board has had the keycaps changed out. This is the default space bar. I'll get to him in a second. I've upped the spring tension. I've lubricated all of the switches so they slide real nice. I tend to have ape fingers, and when I brush keys, I tend to cause them to trip. Browns are among some of the heavier switches. They are 60 grams. However, most of the time, I find the 85 gram keys to be much, much better for me personally now. For a lot of people, this is a really heavy switch. Like, you can lay your hand on it. However, I can't find any information anywhere on these low pro switches, and I'm starting to understand why. So I'm going to make a clip to explain why. In this little bin here, I'm going to pull out this. Is a standard spring for a Gateron Brown. So they are 60 gram. They're linear for the most part. They have three sections, but they are actually just a linear spring. And this is a Spirit 80 gram. Now you'll see they're a decent amount longer than uh, the original spring. However, upon further inspection and the attempt, and I've actually done all of these already, uh, they actually do not bottom out before the switch does, even when they're in there. Now, these are 80 gram springs, but because of the additional length, they actually they feel closer to 85s, so I have a Ajaz AK33 right here that I previously did this with Spirit 85 gram springs. Now, I can't seem to find those anymore, but these feel about the same. Once you put a uh, key cap on it here, let me just pop one on. Oh, yeah. They might be a little bit heavier. Now, these are also taller keycaps, so the feel is a little different, but um, they work very well. You can use normal springs for Gateron Low Pros, and they actually work quite well. Yeah, the process is pretty much the same. Uh, switch openers do not work for these switches, and the reasoning why can actually be seen right here. You'll notice that the locations for the clips are slightly off. So unfortunately, you cannot reassemble the switch, so you still have to do them by hand. Other than that, though, and the fact that they don't fit in the stamp holders, lubing them is exactly the same. The only thing I would tell you is on the front side of one of these, you'll notice there is a bump on top. That bump on the top, do not lube that because what it will do is it will actually take away your tactile feel. The rest of this, you can lube around the edges because that's what comes into contact around the edge here, as well as the spring perches. If you are putting longer springs in, you definitely would want to lube the perches because those don't turn quite as good as the originals did. And without the lube, they tend to, uh, they tend to be really tight, like they're hard to push. Also, another tip for lubing these, and it has to do with the assembly, especially if you're putting in higher powered springs. One of these guys is very handy to have. Now this guy, he's actually meant for jewelry. Um, this is a rather cheap one that I'm not really impressed with, but leave the plastic shroud surrounding your switch and lube like this. That way when you go to put the switch back together, because these are really hard to push together with the longer spring, you can slide this down over top and then you can hold on the sides and just push your switch back together and then pull the tab out and you'll see it lets go. So just some thoughts and some insights into this. I've also done tape across the PCB to get rid of some of the, the high-pitched noises when you type. What I want you guys to know about, though, you'll notice I'm cutting little holes. On these low-profile boards, the stabilizers actually go right through the board. So what I was having when I put it together is you see, you can see the light through the hole? Yes, this is the back side of the stab. So I went to put my switches on, and uh, basically every time I would push them, they'd stick. 
And the reason they're sticking is because, well, they're sticking to the plastic. Now, it's kind of hard to tell, especially when you're using a razor knife against a PCB, that you're not going to cut things. So a tip for that, if you ever come across this as a problem. So what you can do is you can take this, shine underneath, and there you are, there are your stabs. Cut out with knife, make them look like that. And then while you're in here, what you actually can do is you can let them fall through and you can put some of your lube, this is GPL 205, on the outer box of the stab. Do not put too much on or they'll become sluggish. Um, the factory wire lubing is actually all right. It's not great, but that will definitely help with the movement. As well as foam modded the board to get rid of any reverberation. Now, to be clear, you do not need to do any of these mods to this board. It was a beautiful board to start with, and uh, personal preference, I've changed it, and now it's a board I absolutely love. So let's go over the features. This, as you can see, is plugged in, and uh, I'm gonna unplug it here for a moment. And up on top here, you'll see there is Bluetooth off and cable. If you set it to cable, it will run off the cable and nothing else. If you set it to Bluetooth, it will connect wirelessly, focus camera, connect wirelessly and allow you to use whatever computer you want. And I'll show that in a second too. The switch over here switches between the Windows layout and the Mac OS layout. By default, it comes on the Mac OS layout with the Mac keys. It does include the Windows keys, so do not worry about that. And I have a keycap off here because it's hard to see the backlighting with these keycaps, that's okay. It, it is backlit, and as you can see, and those are fully programmable. I'll let you guys look into that one when you uh, get to it. But let's demonstrate this Bluetooth here for you. So up here, I've got me a notepad, and if I press buttons, you'll see they pop up, and you can go real fast. Like, it does not, it does not miss. It's lightning quick. And then, if I come down here to the board, my FN key is up here instead of down here. I'll explain that later, but for now, if you press FN, and you press the 2 key, you'll see it flashes and then goes solid. And what that says is that it's actually connected to this MacBook over here. I apologize for the focus, this camera is garbage. Okay, but let's say I want to go back to the computer. One, and we are back on the computer. And then this actually happens so fast that if I go immediately and start typing, you see, I actually beat it there, but yeah, if you weren't prepped to switch that fast, I missed the FN key. There we go. Yes, it works fantastic. It is a beautiful board. Um, the power does not interrupt the connection. It will not have to reconnect because of the power being added on. Okay, now you may have heard that beep. That beep is it connecting to the computer. Now, why would it need to do that if it was Bluetooth? Well, let me show you. So if you can go into a piece of software called VIA here. Now, remember how I said my FN key was up here instead of here, where it is on the default board? Let me show you how that works. So in VIA here, you actually have the layouts for Mac, Mac when you're holding FN, Windows, and Windows when you're holding FN. Now that's completely customizable. I won't go into that right now, but I will show you a basic customization. So up here, you'll notice I have the delete key. Now on the default keyboard, delete is actually where this MO is. And right here is an RGB toggle. So if I go into lighting here and RGB toggle, magic, that button now programs the RGB on the board. And it's live, it does that right now if I press it. Now I'm gonna switch that back because the beautiful thing about this board is I was able to keep my layout from my old board, which I absolutely loved, but get lots of the features of this as well as the ability to be wireless, which is nice. So this is a fantastically powerful piece of software and what's even more cool about it, it allows you to do macros. For example, my Windows key here you'll notice actually does something else. It brings up this. What I was able to do was tell the keyboard, I want you to press Alt space and then release space, release Alt. And what that is on this computer is Power Toys Run. It allows me to bring this up. I can type in what I wanna do. I can go to a browser or I can go to a folder directly, that kind of thing.
Now, it's a fantastic board. I love it. Switches real fast. Programs from here. You can do the lighting from here, but it's all programmable from the board, of course. The only thing it does not do is this software does not run in the background at all. Um, if you have lighting effects across multiple devices and you run crazy stuff like that, obviously this is not going to do that for you. But it actually works really well on the board and it keeps this board in this layout no matter what computer I connect it to. So once I've set this, I can be done with it. Now, the cool thing about this is you don't actually need the app. You can actually go to a web page here in any of the major browsers and you'll see it's asking if I want to connect. I can click connect and I have the same programmer. So even if I go somewhere else and I need to change something for some reason, I can just pop this up in a web browser, make my changes and it works. The software is everywhere with you as long as you have internet. <laughs> All right, so as you see, I got monkey type up here. I'm gonna give you a view of the keyboard and then we will uh, do a quick sound test for you. And keep in mind this board is modded. It's a lot deeper than it would normally be, but let's switch to that and give you guys a demo. So here we are and yes, yes, yes. Ah! Start that again. And there is your typing test. I love this board, it is fantastic. If you are questioning whether you should get one, 100% get one. They are awesome. Now, uh, I did say I would address this space bar. Um, the original K3, the spacing of the stabilizer bar and the switch on these keys was staggered. So you would have one and then two down below one and then two down below. They have since fixed that. They are now all in a line like they're supposed to be on normal boards. Just keep in mind that these stabilizers are very, very tight tolerances. So they're positioning, they don't have a bunch of wiggle room. And I actually ran into an issue with this key set where the space bars stabilizer holes are just ever so slightly too close. So it won't go on this board nicely. That being said, every other key sap key cap set I have in the house works just fine with this and all of these as you can see work brilliantly so that's a quick overview of this board if you're questioning this board and you want to try a low profile there's nothing wrong with this it is a fantastic board I love it dearly and uh, have a good one guys